This is how to get started with the Unreal Editor for Fortnite. So the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you have got it installed and if you haven't done that already you can watch my previous video where I go over how to do exactly that. But once you've done that you can come back to this video and what we're going to do is we want to go to our library and find the Unreal Editor for Fortnite and just click it to launch it and open it up like so. Now the first time you load this up this may take a few seconds of loading so it might look like it's frozen. Don't worry if it has it is just loading in the background. Just give it a few minutes and it will open up. Once it has opened up, what we need to do is make sure we just scroll down to the bottom of this. You can read it if you want to, but just scroll down to the end and just accept those terms and conditions and do the same again with the end user license agreement. Accept all and it will continue loading as you can see here. Once it is opened up, you'll see something like this. Now, if you've used Unreal Engine before, this will look very familiar to you as that is what it is. It is the Unreal Editor, but just more for Fortnite now. If you've not used Unreal Engine before, then don't worry, this might be a little bit daunting to begin with. If so, then you might want to go over some Unreal Engine beginner videos to help you get more comfortable with that. And if you do want to do that, you can watch my video linked in the description down below and on screen now of how to get started with Unreal Engine 5, as again, that is what this is using. The Unreal Editor for Fortnite is Unreal Engine 5. So you can again see this news tab here. I'm going to press done, but you can go over all of that if you wanted. Now we have some templates here for you to start with. So we have project browsers, so we have Tilted Towers, Greasy Grove, Survival Island. We have loads of different things here for us to choose from. Or we can go on to feature examples. So we have Verse Detonation, Verse Devices, Verse Parkour. We have so many different things. And we also have our own projects here once we've created them. You can also see here we have Getting Started, Docs and Community, which will take you on to different web browsers for you to be able to look at these as well. So it will take you on to the Epic Games Dev Community for you to read all this stuff if that's what you want to do as well to help you get started. But what I'm going to do is just go into Island Templates and I'm going to pick a random island. So let's, for example, pick Tilted Towers, Point of Interest Island. I'm then going to change the project location because I don't want it on my C drive. So I can press this little folder icon here to browse for a folder and I'm just going to put this into my Unreal Engine Projects folder as well. And then I'll name this one Fortnite Tilted Map, for example. So then you can check or uncheck Unreal Revision Control, which essentially means you're not going to overwrite someone else's work and they can't overwrite your work. And you can select a team here as well. For me, I obviously don't have any team set up, so I'm going to have no team, just you. But if I did want it to create a team so you can work with other people on this as well, you can press Create a Team. I'm not going to bother with that, so let's just hit create down here and we're going to be creating this project we've just set up. So it might take a while to load, but don't worry, that's most likely just because it's your first time having it load up. But once you do load, you will see something like this. You might be really far out and you'll want to get closer. So to be able to move in the viewport, hold down right mouse button and you can move the mouse like this and then use WASD to move the mouse. However, you'll see we're still moving really slowly. Now, what you can do is use your scroll mouse wheel to speed up the camera or go to the top right and increase the camera speed like so. Or if you want to go to a specific location, what you can do is select an asset and then press F and you'll be taken directly into it perfectly like so. Now it's still a little bit laggy because it's still preparing the shaders for me at the moment. So I'll wait for it to finish doing that and I'll get back to you. So my shaders have finished preparing. And as you can see, we're now in the Tilted Towers area on Fortnite. So let's go over some of the basic controls here. So in the top left, we have scalability. For me, it's high, but what you can do is set it to low, which will then obviously make it run a lot better, but won't look as good. So we'll just let that load for a second. And when you do change it, it might need to prepare the shaders once again, as you can see down here, but this will then make it run a lot more smoothly. So this is good if you're on a lower end PC, for example, as you can see perfectly here. And if we go back to our scalability, what we're gonna do is set it to auto and that will set it to the best settings based upon your system. So for me, that is gonna be epic as you can see here, which is the highest because it won't go to cinematic unless you currently set it to be that. So now we've got the scalability working perfectly for our own system. What we can do as well is you see we have the perspective tab up here. This will allow you to go into different views. So we can go to a top view, a right view, and this is especially good if you want to put things in specific locations. And you see we're also in wireframe mode as well. I'm gonna go back to perspective. To the right of this, we have lit. I'm gonna go to unlit. So if you don't want any lighting, wireframe if you want to see all the different wireframe stuff on here. This is all gonna make a lot more sense if you already know some stuff about game development already. 
We have lots of other things on here as well. For example, player collision can be a very useful one. So you see what the player can actually collide with. So if you're getting stuck in a certain area, looking at the player collision might be useful for you. I'm going to go back to just the lit tab as that is what the player is going to see. We can then also go to show and see all the different things here to be able to show and see in the editor. And we have the time of date, which is also very interesting. So this is on a simple slider that we can move about and simply change the time of day like this, which I think is an awesome feature that they've added in. I think it looks really, really cool. And it looks like it is based on a 24 hour clock as well. So for me, I'm going to set this at 2 p.m. So 14 like so. I think that looks quite good. One more thing up here is if we go to the three dotted arrows on the very far left, we can show FPS as well if we wanted. So for me, I'm getting about 55 frames a second. And we can do loads of other things on here as well but that's going to be the main one you're going to want to look at. One more thing is if you press control space, you're going to open up the content browser. That is what we have here. So at the moment, the only thing I've got is all. So if we go back here, we have Epic, Materials, Epic Base, Concrete. So you have all the different materials in here like so. Then you have Fortnite, which is going to have loads of different things in here from Fortnite. So for example, consumables. So you're going to have an airstrike. You can go into devices where you have the storm controller. You can go into grey box where you have stuff to be able to grey box, which if you don't know what grey boxing is, it's essentially where you can plan out your level without putting in all these specific assets. So there's loads of things in here for us already. So the ones which you'll probably find the most useful are meshes, where you can then see all the different meshes in here. So there's not a lot for me, probably because of the map I selected, but we have some in there. And we also have prefabs. So for example, all these different buildings and a castle and anything else which we want to just put straight in, we have these prefabs for us already that we can just place in wherever and whenever we want. And also, I'm sorry I mentioned the meshes, there's not a lot of them because of my map. That doesn't matter, you're gonna get the same no matter what map. Is then the next folder, the Fortnite tilted map content, which is specific to this map, which at the moment is basically just the map and the level in there. So we'll press control space again to close the content browser like so. And if you want to know how you can actually play the game to test it out, you'll notice there's no play button. The play button is actually the launch session. So we'll press launch session here and it'll ask you to save everything. It'll just prompt you to do that. So make sure you do save it. And then once it does that, it will then launch a session for us to be able to actually test out this map and play it in Fortnite. So once again, it might take a few minutes to load, but once it does load, we will be able to see it. So as you can see, it is now actually launching Fortnite. So this doesn't do it in the editor, it actually launches it in Fortnite, which I think is a great feature because you're gonna be able to see how it actually looks and runs in game. Because if you use Unreal Engine itself, you will know that how it looks and runs in editor is always different to in game. So the fact that this is already done in Fortnite makes it very, very good for us. So we're now just connecting to Fortnite itself. And once we've connected, it will download everything, which you saw there for a split second as that did it quite quickly. Now, I do want to mention as well, as this is taking quite a while and it probably will be for you as well. Don't worry, that's mainly just because it is the first time doing it. First time doing things is always the longest. After that, it's kind of stored in the cache and the memory, so it's done a lot, lot quicker. The first time is always the longest. So once it's loaded, you'll see we are now here inside of Fortnite in the map in the level we have just created. So we can then walk around and have this working perfectly. But you can also notice we can actually move stuff in here as well. So you'll see in the left there, it says aim at an object and press a slot button to copy it there. So let's press one and we now have a rock in our one slot. And if we press one somewhere over here, we can see that we can actually then have it equipped. And if we press left click, we're gonna then paste it there. So we now have a rock down here instead. Obviously that doesn't look great there because it's floating, but you get the idea. So what we can then do is hold F to push it away, hold C to pull it in, hold R to rotate clockwise, hold Z to rotate counterclockwise. All these controls are on the left as you can see. We can press tab to change where we are gonna be rotating. So we can then do it on the yaw instead like this. And we can do tab again to keep changing it. And we can press V to add in a grid. So if we to place this down now, this is now gonna have a grid attached to it. And if we press V, we can toggle the collision. So at the moment it's on everything, then it's on terrain only, then it's on nothing. So we can actually place it wherever we want now. So this will look a little bit better. Play that there. We now have just a rock coming out of the ground like so. So that looks great. 
If we press B, we can look at some different options on here as well. So a lot of this is pretty self-explanatory, but this is pretty cool. So this isn't just playing the game, it is also allowing you to edit it in-game so you can see what it is that you're actually doing in the proper perspective of what the player is going to see. So if I just right mouse button, we're going to exit that like so. Then we can run over here into the actual proper part of the map and do the same thing if we really wanted to. So if we were to go over here for example and I wanted to get this ice machine, whatever it is, we can then do the same thing. So we can left click to copy it and then left click to paste it there like so. Let's say, well actually I don't want it there, I don't like how that looks. What I'm going to do is exit this, hover over it and then right click to cut it and it's no longer going to be there anymore. I'm going to exit that once again. And you can do this with absolutely anything that you want. If we press tab, we still have our inventory here, which is now going to include prefabs, galleries, devices, weapons, anything that you want. So if, for example, if I wanted to put in the Slappy Shores Slap Factory, I can do exactly that. I can then open that and I can then access all of the different modular assets that make up that factory. So I can get, for example, this wall and I'll press place now and I can place that wherever I want. And you can see this is snapping to a grid, so it's gonna be placed exactly how and where we want. So you can then have modular building with all of the stuff in here. And if I to go back, select it again, I can equip that, so then I now have that on my two slot. So if I to get out of the inventory, press two, you can see we can now place down the building itself, which is absolutely massive. So if I to just left click, you can see what that's gonna do. So let's pull it a little bit closer by holding C and then I will left click and we can see that that has now placed down the entire factory over here. So I don't have to do it modularly, I can actually just place down the entire building. And then let's just put a rock out here as well, rotate it, put another rock and then we have some rocks outside the factory. Obviously I'm making something which looks terrible here, I'm just getting across the idea that you can just make whatever it is that you want inside of this very very quickly and easily. And you can see we're walking around and again if we wanted to change this i could get rid of this wall and i could replace it with a different wall so i could then copy this one over here and move it over there if i really wanted to i don't but if i wanted to i could and then press m we can open up the map perfectly like so so a lot of this makes sense if you've played fortnite before it's, it's all the same and all makes perfect sense to you then if we press escape what we can do is start games we can actually play it we can respawn we can go to the settings whatever it is but I just want to quit this, return to lobby, yes, we're going to leave this and I'm going to go back to the actual Unreal Editor for Fortnite. You can see in the bottom right now it wants to save 2000 items as that is what I've placed into the level, most of those obviously being the actual building itself that I just put in, the big prefab, and it's now saved those and you can see we've now got all this saved in here. I'm again just going to exit out of Fortnite, so I'm going to close Fortnite and go back to the editor and you can see that what we did inside of the game itself is now automatically in the editor here so it's all done at runtime perfectly like so that's how easy it is to actually create things inside of the uefn again i've not created anything amazing here i'm just doing it for the purpose of this video very quick very rough but you see we have these rocks here outside the factory and if i had to go over here you can see all these different rocks that i placed down as well i did those ones i did these ones sorry so you can see all these different rocks that we have down here you see there as well I've got 1135 frames per second in that Fortnite editor so you can see it is very very efficient and it does run very well. Up in the top right you can see project size 2% so there is a maximum amount you can put into each level but 2% for everything that I've just put in over there, I put in two massive factories, that's not bad at all. And if you to click on it you can actually open up to see what's taken up the most space. So you can see at the moment the majority of it is just the materials. But I think that will probably be it for this video. I'm not going to be going over too much today and if there are other things that you think you want me to cover or you want to know and understand about, definitely do let me know in the comments down below as I'll be happy to make a video covering anything anybody wants me to cover. And again, if you're not familiar with Unreal Engine, then it might be useful to look into that as well as obviously this is the Unreal Engine editor, but this is now more streamlined and specific for Fortnite rather than including everything else in here as well. But thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, do make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.